In the last episode, we took to the end to build a self-destructing Wither Rose farm, that is correct, and we also built a super, super efficient shulker farm that is pumping out more shulker shells than I know what to do with. Welcome to the wonderful world of Everbloom, I'm Dr. Jankovic, and today we have a shulker shop to build. However, before we jump into that, I have a few updates to give you about my base here. The first one being, and as you can see here, I have marked off all of the walls and paths and everything that we're gonna need to build the rest of my base. And inside the tower here, I've got a few bits and bobs that I've been working on. First thing over there, I have been sort of categorizing shulkers in a way to where when I need something specific, I don't have to look through so many boxes in this pile. And the most obvious thing you may note is this giant wool farm over here. These are the six colors that are not available at spawn to buy just yet. And in this episode, we are absolutely gonna need every color of wool. But before we get started here, let's head on over to the pop-up shulker shop and see if we've made any diamonds. And here we are, let's see. Oh, and we have made another nine diamonds. And of course we can't forget to flex on everyone. That'd be a shame if we didn't do that. Truth be told, I'm not that rich on the server, but you know, one can hope. And since we're at the shopping district, let me show you the last thing I've been working on. Right over here, I have a slightly off-center beacon, but we have a fenced-in area where, you guessed it, a shulker shop is gonna go. That's right. I don't want to leave that pop-up shop too much over there because we have sales to make, and the earlier we can get a decent shop here, the better the sales experience is going to be. And you know what? With any good salesman, I'm just missing one thing. And there we go. That's better. If we're going to be a salesman, we've got to look the part. I actually made this skin myself, and I just knew if I was going to be a salesman, I would need gold buttons and a gold chain on my wrist. We're going to be the shulker salesman of the server. I am so excited. But first, we need an actual shop. So let me dig this down about 25 blocks, and I'll see you in just a second. As you saw in that very short time lapse, Dakota May actually popped on over and helped us. Big shout out to her, it made it really, really quick work. There is one thing I missed though, and it's right behind me, it's that beacon frame. I need to take that down. And that looks much better, and I realize I haven't given you much information on what this shop is actually going to be. Now you might be thinking that I'm going to make an underground shop of sorts, and actually this giant hole here is just where the redstone's gonna go. That's right, I loaded up the creative world, I put my redstone hat on, and I created a machine that, honestly, I am most proud of so far in my entire Minecraft journey. As much as I would love to give you guys a sneak peek in the creative world of exactly how this machine works, I kinda don't wanna ruin the surprise. I, I wanna run the time lapse. I want you guys to guess how it works. And don't worry, we will be doing some testing by the end of the episode, of course. With that being said, let's not waste any time at all. I've got a ton of supplies to lay down here. Let's get this redstone built. Alright, we're all finished with all the redstone down here. Now it is on to testing and stocking. This is a very large contraption and before I cover it up, 
um, with a glass floor and make it a little bit harder for me to get down there. I think I want to test every aspect of this thing, bring you guys along the way, and just make sure it works because there's a lot of things that could go wrong here. Before I do that though, I do want to explain how this works. Basically what they'll do is go over here, deposit their diamonds into this barrel. From there, if we go below here, their diamonds will be stored in this chest. I call this chest the temporary chest. Their diamonds will be stored in this chest, kind of like credits or tokens. Once this chest is loaded up with tokens, these pistons will extend, completing just a tiny circuit here. So when you click a button along these repeaters, it will drop a colored piece of wool here. These colors of wool correspond to a sorter down here, which will then dispense the correct number of shulker boxes. And then of course you have a water stream going all the way up and you get your shulker boxes here at this water pool. And as a side note, when I was designing this machine, my two main goals were to make it very, very reliable. So you get the shulkers that you click the button for every single time. And also I wanted the machine to turn itself off once you run out of credits. This creates an automatic way for me to just go underground and get all my diamonds from that single barrel instead of having to check multiple chests. And also it's a really cool user experience. Although there is one fatal flaw, but we'll cover that a little bit later. For now, it's time to do our first test actually. I've got the filters loaded here into this hopper. And when we deposit a stack of diamonds, number one, the filter should stop at 41 diamonds here. And this light should come on and these pistons should extend. And there we go. Light is on, pistons extended. That is perfect. And if we look back into this hopper, we have 41 diamonds. This hopper should have one in it, and this is the only time this will happen. And then down here, we should have 22 diamonds. All right, that is all working correctly. Let me unload all of this. All right, and since I took all my tokens out of that temporary chest, the pistons retracted, and this machine would no longer work. Next up, I wanna add all the buttons along the front here, and there's a reason why I haven't done that yet. All right, this is looking really good. This is the first time I've seen it with the actual stroker boxes here. In the creative world, I just used wool, but this looks super good. And so the shulker boxes don't accidentally extend when they accidentally click on the shulker boxes. I placed these upside down against the block, and then this one had to go sideways because there's just no room up or above. <laughs> and I didn't want people sticking random things in the shulker, so I think it looks really good. I have decided to have three double chests of stock worth of shulkers in each color here. So that's just going to take a whole long time to stock. I think I'm going to work on that over a couple of streams. But right now, what I want to do at least is get some of the easier ones to gather. Um, I want to make sure the sorters are still configured since I've been building above them. And I wanna go ahead and test out a few of the easy colors, maybe do five different shulker boxes. If it works correctly, I'm gonna say it's all good to go and I'm gonna start stocking this thing fully. Okay, I just took a moment to stock three different colors. That is red, lime, and blue. I've got five diamonds in my hand here. Let's see if this works correctly. So depositing tokens, it did not turn on. And this is why we test things. I figured out what was wrong. So in the creative world, I did not have a shulker box here. And if we go underneath here, we'll see that this hopper is pointing straight into the shulker box. And earlier I said that I didn't want random stuff in that box. Well, I broke my own rule. That's an easy enough fix though. We just need to switch this hopper to point towards the comparator. All right, I got that hopper switched the right way around this time. It's all reset. Let's deposit our five diamonds. All right, perfect. It turned on that time. And then those colors were red. I think I'm gonna do two of these. One lime and blue. The wool is going. It went into the correct hopper and I am realizing my mistake. I used, <laughs> I used dispensers instead of droppers. We need to swap these out. And once again, this is why we test things. I got those dispensers swapped out for droppers, but I did notice another issue. When we click a button, it's not actually subtracting one diamond from the temporary chest. And I think I found the issue. This needs to be delay of two. Let's try that again. Those five diamonds are still in there. Let's see if it works this time. And this should be the last one. Yep, machine turned off. 
and then we should have five shulker boxes in the colors that we ordered all right i think we got a few extra here we sure did we got we got we got multiple extras but i think there's a way that i had to prime the hoppers in creative mode so let me put these back in underground here and let's try that one more time to see if we get the correct amount and that is perfect the second time around we got exactly the shulker boxes that we ordered so that means i'm just gonna have to try out each color as i stock them and that's not too much to ask i would say this thing's working pretty smoothly i think i'm gonna commit to stocking it all and getting it all ready hopefully i have enough reserve here that i really won't have to restock it for the rest of the season but you know what some of the paper hats truly are addicted to shulkers, so I wouldn't be surprised if I do have to restock some colors, which will be perfectly fine. I mean, we'll get filthy rich while we're doing it. Let me take a quick nap and let's talk about that one flaw that I was talking about. You may have been able to guess what the flaw is based on how I describe this machine and how it works through all the testing here, but it's, it's honestly a, a pretty big one if you're on a public server or something like that. It's not so serious here on the Paper Hat server because we're all friends. Uh, we we have a pretty strong honor system here, and honestly, I'm not too worried about it if, if somebody gets extra boxes, but that is just it. They can absolutely get extra boxes. The reason being is I could have made the back of this much, much larger, and this was originally an oversight, but I just decided not to worry about it too much. But the circuit that's responsible for subtracting one diamond every time you hit a button is this one here and i was able to compact it and get the delay as short as possible however there is a split second where if you're able to click two or three buttons pretty much at the same time you will get all three of those boxes and only use one of your tokens which again we're all friends here on the server so if that does happen i'm not too worried about it i do have a mega shulker farm that we're not going to need that many shulker boxes so I'm, I'm fine with it, but if you're thinking about making something like this on a public server or, or somewhere where you really want it to be held down, you may want to spend some time figuring out how to make that work. But that's enough about this machine and how it works and all that. Let me spend some time grinding out some dyes, crafting shulker boxes. We're probably going to need a lot of wood. Uh, and let me just get this thing stocked the best I can. And we're back and you would not believe it, but this thing is completely stocked. If we look in all these chests, they are full to the brim here, ready to be sold to the other paper hats. I did the math here and this machine's capable of holding over 3,100 shulkers. That really is an insane number, but my goal was to stock it once in the season. Although I'm not sure that'll happen. I'm sure we'll run out of one or two colors eventually. And I honestly didn't do it alone. Mr. Gold was the first to help. He gave me access to his bamboo farm for the rest of the season in exchange for an IOU. I really, really hope that I don't regret that in the future. But then Norsey Kelsey came over and helped me actually stock the machine. Jan Cat Lady donated some chests. Actually, she sold me some chests. Uh, Glitch Intended Gaming, he also sold me a few stacks of chests. And Takota May came over here and helped test out the machine as well. So we had some more tests done, and I did find a few more problems, but it is all working fantastic. The only last thing that I need to do is run some diamonds through it and make sure that we don't get double boxes and of course we need to plan a build around this thing we won't be doing the full build around it in this episode that would just make this episode way too long but i have been thinking about what i want the sides and the floor of this pit to be and i'm thinking just really really mysterious i think i just want to go full black concrete i think that's going to make this contraption look really really cool Although I'm still proving to have a really, really bad habit of choosing expensive blocks. We're going to need a ton of gravel and a ton of sand. Let me go gather that. And mission accomplished. Look how amazing this looks. This was almost two shulkers of black concrete and almost a shulker of string at the bottom. That looks so crazy to me. It's like, uh-oh. 
And apparently we have mob spawning somewhere. I'm going to have to figure that one out. But as I was saying, check out this floor of string here. It's like a piece of graph paper or something. Makes it look very, very technical, very, very measured out. Moving right along though, I think I want to add some white glass across this whole thing. And there we go, we're all done placing the glass and it looks much, much better. And while this looks amazing and we probably could just leave it like this and it looked good enough to be in the shopping district, I do like the idea of putting a build around it so they don't actually see the full effect until they walk into the front door. So we're definitely gonna be building something around this. Not sure what just yet, but that's what creative mode's for. But like I said earlier, my work's not done here. I do need to run some diamonds through it, test out each individual color, make sure it only gives one box. And on top of that, I do want to write up some instructions in the form of a lectern with a book. So when people come in here, they know that they don't have to put in one diamond at a time or anything. They can just dump their diamonds in, click as many buttons as they want, and as soon as their diamonds run out, that lamp will go off. I want it to be as simple as possible for the paper hats. But anyways, it is getting dark now in game, and it is very, very fitting because this is all the time I have left for this episode. Guys, thanks so much for being here. This was a big one. We did a lot of redstone. We placed a lot of things. So if you liked what you see, please do hit the like button. If you want to see more, please do subscribe. It helps me out with that YouTube algorithm. Guys, thanks so much for being here, and I will see you for episode 10.